What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mordai J and we are locked in. This is episode five of Harlem and we are halfway through it. We know that our girl Camille had that one night stand, you know what I'm saying? She getting it in. But the next morning she missed an important, important meeting with Dr. Pruitt at 9 a.m. sharp and it is now noon and she asked Jameson, can she use that laptop? But she found something on there. Don't go looking. But this looks like it was on the desktop. But first, shout out to the notification gang. If you're new to the channel and you want to be a part of it, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Hit that like button. It's the easiest thing you can do. Camille seen something on there. And <clears throat> you know the words, good things don't last forever. So we're going to pick up where we left off and see what's on our boy Jameson's desktop. Well, it turns out Jameson had her Instagram on there. And he was looking for things that she liked to do. And she's upset. Oh, you use this to manipulate me. and figure. He did what he's supposed to do. Just like women. When you go on a date with somebody, you should do background checks. All he did was find out what you were interested in so he could take you on a good date. Women always say, men, they have to go on dates, but they don't plan anything. This man did everything right. And she's upset about it. He asked for your Instagram. What's he supposed to do? Go on your Instagram and just like the pictures and keep it moving? He probably read the captions. He looked at the pictures. He seen what you enjoyed. And also he said the piece that you wrote on gentrification drew him in more. I'm on Jameson's side here. She's overreacting. Alexa, spell accountability. Accountability is spelled A C C O U N T A B I that's what Camille doesn't have all he did was want to know what's going on with her she blames him for taking her out for her missing her important important meeting with Dr. Pruitt <sighs> man where do we go from here and first of all people if you're late for an appointment that's at nine o'clock and it's 12 oh it's emailing is too late you gotta call it's, it's no emailing me I I, I don't want to hear it you need to call me and it better be you in the hospital because at this point there's no making up for it now she's talking about i could have been murdered last night well if you did your research on this gentleman you could easily find somebody's name look up any criminal records that they have so he did his research she didn't do hers she's just upset because she's late for that meeting she goes to dr pruitt clothes on from last night smelling like sex probably no draws looking good though and she's like, Dr. Pruitt, I was just in your office. She said, I was in my office at nine. Here it is. Well, she left at like 12, 12, 30. So it's probably about one, one fifteen, maybe two. And Dr. Pruitt said, there's two things. One, you're late. And two, inappropriate cleavage. I'm talking about the things are sitting up, people. <sighs> For the workplace. I told you, Dr. Pruitt is about business. And you can't do that. Oh, we black girls. No, 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 no. She has an important task of running this school and everything that these professors do fall on her. Camille, come on, we gotta step it up now. Now she's telling her, you're gonna be the assistant to a student. Oh, guess who it is? It's Nora, the Native American, the one that she didn't know that her people were indigenous to New York City and they actually got relocated to Oklahoma. Yeah, her. And also Dr. Pruitt tells her, you need to take a shower, you whew, stink. Ty, on the other hand, she ain't had nothing to do in the morning. Why? Because she's her own boss. Now, she does have Anna in the bed with her. And, you know, we had that photo shoot. She also wanted that second date after she seen the haircut. So this right here, this relationship, it may be taking off. This is a good look for Ty. Looks like everybody was getting it in last night. Even Quinn, she went home with Oscar De La Dick. Yeah, damn. A.K.A. Sean. But we know that she said no strings attached just needed that cat scratch you know what i'm saying now she wakes up she's like oh i actually stayed the night with a man a real man he got up and made her breakfast and everything now me personally he's sitting on that bed like a 10 year old man sit on the edge of the bed <laughs> well our boy sean has a child okay but he lives with his grandma they bust in there he's like oh naked lady grandma like get out of here boy now we got to see how Quinn is going to react to this. She gets home and she's got to tell Angie about it. And we know Angie going to keep it real. I don't agree with a lot of things, but then I do agree with a lot of things that Angie says. She's talking about a guy that she had. He had twins, 
She ain't ever get invited back over there, but she said she loved it over there. And of course, Quinn, she was saying, ooh, I like the sex too. It's just, he has a kid. And it's like, come on, Quinn, you got a grown kid named Angie living with you. She's running up your credit card. She ain't paying no rent. She eating all the food. She on the couch, standing it up with popcorn. <sighs> Quinn has a strict policy of no kids that didn't come out of Quinn. And Quinn, that's why I respect you, because I ain't got no kids. You know what I'm saying? I want to be with whoever I have kids with. Call me. But she's thinking about all the places they had sex in the house. The shower. Up under the kitchen table. That's a weird place. But <laughs> that means they were getting it in last night. We know Camille's been having therapy. She was supposed to go to therapy one day, but she had an important meeting, so she missed it. And she's talking to her therapist. Hey, I'm not going to miss anymore. While she's out, guess who she runs into? Ian's mom, Regina. Now, we know that Ian said his mom's been asking about her. So now she's telling Camille, hey, I'm actually having something at the house. I'd like you to come by. Ian's not going to be there. She's like, oh, I'm not worried about Ian, even though we know she is because she found out. He's engaged. She protested his restaurant. So she's saying, you know what? I'm going to come on over there, Regina. Now, she got to go ask the girls, what should I do in this situation? Now, Quinn, she's all for it. Yeah, you should go. Angie and Ty, I told you the two that I'd hang with. They talk about, do you really want to go back over there? I know if my ex's mom invited me over, I'd tell her respectfully. Nah, I'm good. Thank you, though. You know, it was good seeing you. Well, then again, I ain't gonna, I'm lying. I'm lying. My ex is pop. He cool as hell. So if he was to hit me up and say, hey, if you up in Boston, come through. Oh, yeah, I'm sliding through. And he gonna be on that grill. And I know he got beer. She decides to go. Quinn decides to tag along with her. We know they all went to school together, so she probably knows Regina also. When they're there, she's telling Quinn about Jameson. And she's like, you really going to cut him off for that? And they start talking about the man's lower half. And I'm not going to discuss that because I don't give a damn. But another thing, Quinn says she's telling Sean to bring back her necklace. And she's going to bring it over to Regina's house, Ian's mom's house. So it's a safe location because she doesn't want to see Sean again. It was just sex, allegedly. When they get to the house, guess who opens the door? Our boy Ian. Now, this is his mom's house. And it is a little going away for them. So, of course, their son is going to be there. Now, these two, they're deciding, should they go in? Should they stay? Should they leave? Should they run away? Should we go in? We don't know what we want to do. But at the end of the day, Quinn's like, girl, we got to go in. I already told Sean to hit me up when he gets here with my necklace. So, they decide to go in. Ty and Ann, they getting close. They out. They eating dinner. They having a little bit of drinks. Well, we know they getting it on in that room at least two times so far. Now, she's trying to figure out, hey, you going to let me see my article in Forbes? She's like, nah, I ain't going to let you see it yet. You'll see it when it comes out. Now, when they're out walking, they start kissing each other. Now, Ty, she looks and we see another black couple, two black ladies walking down the street. And they looking at Ty kissing this white woman. And they're like, mm-hmm. So now Ty, she's a little hesitant to be seen out in public with this white woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. love who you love people and before you get in the comments saying anything about mo i've never dated a white woman i've never been involved with a white woman i don't have anything against white women i've just never been involved with them i have cousins that are married to white women and they cool as hell they're my people but like i say i don't care who you love i don't care who you mess with that doesn't do anything to my life so love who you love people and i definitely wouldn't know how this feels for ty <laughs> When they get in, Regina and her husband, they come over and talk to Camille because they, you know, they had a good relationship with her when she was dating their son. And Camille, what does she do when she gets nervous? She starts rambling. Oh, it, it's no problem that Ian's here. It's good that he's here because he grew up in this house and it's just the vibe. Quinn's like, Camille, sh sh kill that. <laughs> Sean finally shows up to the party and he brings himself in the house. Quinn's talking about, you supposed to text when you got here. He said, I did four times. No answer, so I just came in. Hell, I see people walking in, and it smell like food in there. I'm going on in. Now, Quinn's like, dang, all right, you did text me. Regina comes over, and she's like, oh, Quinn, who is this handsome man? Boy, if you don't get you some food, don't mind if I do, ma'am. I do very well with parents. <laughs> now, Ty, she has to go and talk to the most brutally honest friend that she has, and that's Angie. We know these two, they argue with each other. Usually, when you have those two in a group, they're the closest because they're going to tell each other the truth. 
Now she's talking to Angie about, do you think I'm a sellout? Cause I'm dating a white woman, even though it didn't happen like that. Cause she met her before she even knew she was in the, you know, the interviewer in Forbes and Angie, she's taking that sip. Like, mm, it's kind of sell out ish. Now Ty's kind of confused on what she should do. Should she go with her heart or leave the white woman alone because she's running a dating app for people of color. Right on, Angie. At the end of the day, Ty, love is love. You can't go around being miserable to try to please everybody because at the end of the day, they're going to go home and their life is going to continue. You're just going to be upset about something they said like, oh, look at Mo, man. He ain't got no hairline right now. Yeah, I get my hair cut next week. But who cares what people say? You got to do what's best for you. Now, Quinn, she's trying to get Sean up out of here. He would had three plates of ribs. I'm talking about free food people. You never turn it down, especially in this situation. Everybody's gonna be quote unquote classy, so they're not gonna eat as much. My boy Sean came over, hey, long sleeve. I'ma eat, I don't care, I ain't got nobody impressed. Now Quinn is trying to get him up out of here and he said, I'ma leave after I get done with this plate. While he's sitting here, he's actually listening to her and talking. And she's saying, hey, be careful with this clothes because this is biodegradable. You know what I'm saying? It takes so long. And he's paying attention to her. And he's like, what, what are you, a dry cleaner? And now she's telling him about her personal life and how she owns a boutique where she used, I guess, is uh, eco-friendly clothing or cloth material. <laughs> now, we all got an aunt like this. This is Aunt Tammy, Ian's aunt. He's in the kitchen. He's in there doing the ribs. He's doing everything he's supposed to. And this aunt talking about, why could you take Ray's down? Move in with them white folk. And he's saying, look, I, <laughs> I traveled the world. I thought I'd come home with open arms. It's only Tammy Hayden and low key Camille, but she didn't know it was Ian's spot. She's talking about, well, congratulations. You well traveled. What you doing the Rays? He's like, they lost their lease. Ray couldn't afford the place. So I'm just taking the opportunity to move on in. Cause at the end of the day, <laughs> what I just tell y'all, you gotta worry about yourself. Aunt Tammy going in, talking about Ray went to sleep at the stove one time. Give him a break. He's 83 years old. Well, Ray should have had somebody in there helping his ass. 83 years old. My pops is what, 72? Man, about 75, hey, leave it alone, dad. We got it from here. And she's telling <laughs> Ian, F off. Oh, nice to see you, Camille. <laughs> Ian, calm down, brother. He has Camille over here and he's asking her for a little cutting knife because they used to make things in this kitchen. Oh, it's bringing back the memories. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's so cute. And he over here having her do the taste test. Hmm, how you like this sauce? She talking about, oh, it could little, use a little, just a, just a little bit of this. He ain't washed the spoon off or nothing. He just went back to whipping it up. I already came in there and said, hey, yo, whoa, nasty mouth Camille. Mm -mm, get a new spoon, man. Back to real life. He tells Camille, we're having a tasting party and I'd like you to come. And they start congratulating each other. He's like, look at you, a professor at Columbia. So this right here, uh, Ian, you got a fiance in there. You got, yeah. You gotta be focused, brother. Sean, he goes around, cause we gotta get us something to drink, and he runs into Mira, Ia's fiance. And what she's looking for is a dress. She needs something made. She has a nice, mm -hmm, a nice bank account, a nice budget for this dress. Now, Sean, he was paying attention to what Quinn was telling him, and he tells her, I have a friend that's actually a designer, and she has a, a eco-friendly boutique. Now, Mira, she's big into saving the planet, being vegan, so this might work out. Quinn comes in, Sean introduces her to Mira. She's like, oh, I got about a five figure, you know, low five figure, about 25,000. Quinn hears that and she, <clears throat> oh, now she gotta act professional. Oh, 25,000, that's a little lower than what I usually take, just to make it seem like she's really into money, but we know she just had a ball, 2,500 for rent. <laughs> So we got us a deal. Sean's over here making business moves. And this is exactly what her mother said. If you had a man, he could help you get on track and get this business rolling. Good job, Sean, you took my place. Well, it turns out Regina and her husband, they're moving. And guess what? The family, the Walker family will be handing the house down to Ian and his fiance Mira. 
Now we got Camille over here. She's getting a little teary eyed because the family is moving on. Life goes on. You make a decision, you gotta live with it. And she's also seeing that this would have all been mine. Me and Ian, we would have moved into the house that we grew up loving each other in. Oh my God, fumbled the bag. Camille sees how the world is. It doesn't play fair. It doesn't owe you anything. It's gonna keep moving, whether you stop or not life goes on so what does she do she hits up jameson because she realizes she gave him a, a unfair you know an unfair judgment all he did was prepare an evening that she would like in the short notice that she had because if he would have took her to the arcade and she didn't like arcades she would have been telling her girls oh he got me at this damn arcade he's whack i'm not gonna meet up with him she probably would have ghosted him so he planned out a date that she would like and she's realizing hey that was good. That was sweet. So she's rematching him to a game at the arcade. Ty goes and talks to Anne and she tells her, hey, you know, this is kind of tough for me to be dating a white woman, especially with what I got on and how I look amongst my peers, mainly the black people. Now, nine times out of 10, they don't care. They're like, okay, they're, they're dating. Who cares? They're going to keep it moving. The two that looked at her, you see the black dude that was with a white woman. He said, what's up? If I walk past and see you, I say, what's up? Now, Anne, she doesn't understand it because she's white. Now, I, I know what Ty is saying. It's just like I always say, love who you love. But she's telling Anne, we got to end this. Now, we got to all get back together. We got to get the, you know, I'm back at the bar, you know what I'm saying? Just listening to my girls. And they over here watching some Tampa Weather Wives. You know, it's a fake play on um, Housewives or whatever them damn shows are. <laughs> and they're sitting here and they're all watching the girls. They doing just like we see on all the reality shows. They throwing drinks on each other. So the women, they getting hyped. Ty starts talking about what she got going on with Ann. But the bigger issue is <laughs> Camille. Mm -hmm. Well, Angie's running her mouth talking about Queen. Oh, she about to do Mira's dress for 25000 Camille gets upset when she hears this. How are you going to make a dress for my ex's fiance? Uh, I have a business. Angie shouldn't have said anything. Quinn should have been the one to tell her. But at the end of the day, if one of my homeboys say, hey, I'm, I'm about to go take some pictures of your ex and her new fiance. I ain't going to get paid. I don't give a damn. But Camille, she's still hurt. She got that, that hurt in that heart. Camille is upset talking about you supposed to say no to that. Quinn saying, I got a business and we ain't turning down 25000 to design one dress. Shit, I think the most I ever made in one month was twelve thousand dollars. You talking about giving me twenty five thousand dollars for a dress that's probably gonna take me two, three weeks to make? <laughs> we ain't gotta be friends no more, but I'm about to get this money. There you go, episode five of Harlem. Let me know what you think. If you were Quinn, would you have accepted a payment of twenty five thousand dollars to make a dress? And do you think that Camille overreacted to that? Because that's my job to make dresses. Let me know what you guys think. I'm Moda J. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.